Today we've got a very special interview with uh, our testimonial man, Sean Densmore. 14 seasons with Altrincham Football Club, 445 games, 29 goals. And on Sunday, it's Sean's testimonial. It's going to be a fantastic occasion. Plenty of uh, former players and fans' favourites uh, will be down at the J. Davidson Stadium for a 1.30pm kickoff. So welcome, Sean. Thanks for, for joining us uh, today. Um, before we talk about your, your career at Altrincham, t- tell us a little, little bit about you, your early life, where, you, where you're from and, 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 and your family. Yeah, so I've um, got, obviously, my mum and dad, and then I've got an older sister who's uh, two years, 18 months older than me. Um, so, obviously, Scouser, born, uh, born in Liverpool, grew up in uh, Halewood, which is in South Liverpool, not far from, uh, five, ten minutes away from Liverpool Airport. Um, so lived in the same family home till I was 25 before I moved out um, yeah as a youngster just played a lot of sport with my dad pretty much every sport um, we were lucky to have a you know a, a nice house with a decent garden so we were always in the garden We've got four um, lad cousins as well so you know we had a between the five of us we had, a, and to be fair, my sister as well. When she was young, she used to get involved. But so yeah, we had a competitive uh, childhood growing up. As I say, played a bit of everything: cricket, footy, tennis, um, golf. They were the main ones, really. And your first club was was Everton, and you joined Everton uh, very early. Yeah, so I'd got asked by one of my uh, one of my mates, um, my dad's best mate, his his child, who's become one of my best mates, similar age. Um, so we played for Aylward Juniors, which was the local team. Um, so I went and played for them, probably, I think it was eight or nine. It was only for about six months. So I played up front, as most most lads do when the kids. Uh, and we weren't great, to be fair. We used to get tonked most weeks, whatever it would be, maybe 10-5, 10-4, 7-5, 7-4. But I'd always, you know, score a few goals. Um, and then, yeah, from, from that, got a call off. Well, my dad must have got a call off Everton. Um, asked me to go in there and then I'd done my trial period whatever it was and then literally just as that was coming to an end Liverpool asked me to go in as well but I'd enjoyed I'd enjoyed the trial period of Everton and, and I knew a lad there who's had a good non-league career himself Sean Newton because uh, he was from Aylwood as well so uh, yeah signed signed for Everton when I was nine and then yeah was there until I was 19 in the end and you had a great time at Everton yeah it was brilliant obviously um, no kids dreaming it to be involved in a Premier League club. Um, got to go some great places on tour and stuff like that. Um, you know, best facilities, some great grounds where you played at. Um, you know, looking back, don't regret anything. But if I could tell myself something back, I'd just say cherish it a little bit more. Maybe um, not that I took any of it for granted, but I don't think you truly. I don't think many 17, 16, 17, 18 year olds truly have that um, understanding of what they've got and should really, yeah, as I say, just probably maybe made the most of it and cherished it a little bit more than I did. And very few players make it all the way through the system. It's a, it's a, it's a tough level uh, to play at and very, very difficult to, to get through it. And you, you got released, but before you got released um, at, at uh, Everton, you had a little spell at, uh, at Preston North End. Yeah, so got to probably... I had done my two year YT and to be honest I was gonna I was gonna be getting released at the end of my YT. I barely played for the eighteen months, um, up till the end of my second year. Lad ended up getting injured right back, so I ended up playing there, did well, ended up forcing my way into the reserve team by the end of me my, my, uh, my scholarship. So they offered me the years pro off the back of that. Uh, again did well. Played for the reserves, captain the reserves, um but yeah, probably maybe six months out to the end of my pro, you start looking at it. And I was in and around the first team training with them and whatnot. Um, Travelled in a few match day squads where I was, you know, the spare man. Um, but yeah, could sort of tell the way it was going to go. Um, and at the time, Alan Irvine, who was assistant to, to Moise, he just left to take the Preston job. So he asked me to go down before the season finished, which I did. I think I trained for a couple of weeks. And he said, look, the off- offers here to come back. He said... If we had a reserve team system in place here, I'd offer you the deal now, but he didn't at the time. It was youth team, first team. 
but he said by all means come back pre-season um, but then I got a call from Bradford asking me to do the same who seemed a little bit keener so decided to go there instead and whilst you were at Bradford you did play a friendly at Moss Lane um, against Altrincham it wasn't a pre-season friendly it was actually after the season had, had uh, started I wasn't at the game but I remember getting a text message from I can't remember who it was but I got a text message saying oh in the Bradford team is Peter Densmore's son sort of thing and of course for the for your first period of time, that's what you were known as, Peter yeah, Densmore's son. Still, still am with John, the kit man. Um, but yeah, so I went to Bradford. The idea was just to have a look at me training initially, play a couple of games, and it was more, it was like the vibe I got and the understanding I had of it was that I'd be getting a deal. But I told me, oh, I got an abducted tear, then tear the completely. Got an abducted tear a couple of days before the first friendly and ended up missing six weeks. And they brought her right back in at that point. Um, and then, yeah, as you say, Played in a game here. Um, don't remember too much about it. I remember Kevin Street played, and he was really vocal in the game. I always remember thinking, like, "Oh, this is the Reverend." Yeah, uh, this is a bit of a, you know, this was like proper football. Like, I hadn't really come across it really um, at that point. So yeah, it was a bit of an eye opener for me. And you made your debut in a Cheshire Senior Cup game against uh, Vauxhall Motors. 128 was the uh, crowd. We won 4-2 eventually after extra time. Um, but you must have been impressed in that game because Graham Heathcote and Graham Barrow was the assistant manager at the time, um, put you in for what was a really important league game against Lewis. We were really struggling at the time, hadn't scored in four in four games. We did beat Lewis, quite a famous game. Greg Young scored late on. Um, but Graham Heathcote was under a lot of pressure at that time. Yeah, I, remember, I actually remember it pretty well, that game. Not the game as such, but you could sense there was a bit of a... Um, vibe around the place uh, you know I think Graham was under pressure as you say um, results hadn't been great leading up to them I'd actually travelled the week before uh, to Stevenage I think and we got beat 3 or 4 yeah. nil. someone got sent off I think he had Boulder on the line might have been Laney Chris, Chris Laney, Laney. Yeah. Um, and yeah I was thinking oh god <laughs> um, and then come here and you could tell it was a little bit tense and the longer the game went on it was it was getting tense and you know you can hear me being a fullback, you hear things a little bit more than other people on the pitch, maybe so. But I do remember the goal Greg scored, was a uh, golf road and across the keeper with his left peg. Uh, hopefully, he can slot one of them in on Sunday for us. <laughs> yeah, great that he's, he's coming back on yeah, Sunday. Yeah. And, and bizarrely enough, my son saw him play last week. He's playing for Rossington, yeah. Maine, in the Northern Counties East League. And, uh, he always kept himself in good nick. He's I in very he's good shape. He, he sent me some photos saying, look, he's, he's, he's looked <laughs> after himself. Yeah, trying to get his mate to come along as well. Sunday, he's not too sure yet with where Chris Senior, but fingers crossed he'll be able to make it as well. Fantastic. So, a winning start, although a bit of a tempestuous uh, game. And um, that season, when you joined Altrincham, we were 21st in the National League and we ended up 15th. So, we did recover and it ended up being a decent season. Yeah, that's what I can remember. That's what I remember of it. We had some we had some good results, some big results that year. Um yeah, I just remember really enjoying it. Like as I say, it's I don't know how it compares now, but the difference between reserve team football to this level when I came just the importance of yeah. it and whatnot and how much it mattered to people. It was a massive eye opener for me and something I loved like being competitive, you know. Um if you you've got to have that competitive spirit in you. Uh, but yeah, it was a it was a good it was a, it turned out to be a good season. We had some good results. Uh, a couple of games stick out. We had I think we were on telly. I don't know if it was that season, but rushed and diamonds away. We got yeah. a decent result. Um, one all. I think we beat Oxford here on a Sunday. Colin Little scored a cracker. That was one of me. That was a that was a that was a great game. And then. Um, whether it was Luton or Cambridge last day of the Cambridge, season. Cambridge yeah. over seven thousand at Cambridge. Yeah. So. Graham was really, really proud of not wanting us to be a reason for someone else winning the league. Um, and he hammered that into us before the game and he actually said a rule that only one person was allowed over the halfway line, which was Chris Denham. And I remember Chris, it was a pretty warm day and his face was just like a beetroot. Uh, he'd literally ran every channel, fought with the back, they had the two centre-halves, I think he ended up getting took off after like 50 minutes, 55 minutes. But yeah, we ground out a nil-nil. Um, 
yeah, game you still love all that. And to be fair, they were they were they were boss games to play in. Yeah, I mean, Cambridge had a chance of winning the league that day, and we thwarted them uh, by, by by drawing there. But after the game, uh, you gave your shirt to to Pete Scottson, who's the our uh, Radio Alty uh, man, and he still wears it to this day. Every Alty home game, he wears that shirt. Yeah, I've seen him bouncing around with it. To be fair, and in fact, a few of my mates when they've been over the years, they always point out to say, hey, there's, a, "There's a fellow who walks around with your shirt on." You know, number twenty. I think it was twenty or twenty-one. 20. First yeah, twenty-one. First season. Um, but yeah, I didn't realise it was after that game. But uh, yeah, I still notice him when he's got it on. Yeah. And then the following season, really good season, 14th, which is Ultra Young's highest finish since 1996. And we had a good side that season. Yeah, we had some good, I think Graham brought in a fair bit of quality, to be fair. We brought, I think Tom Kearney come in, was a, was a top player, centre mid. Dale Johnson was flying, ultimately got, a, got an injury, which was a shame for him because he was potentially looking like he could have. You know, kicked on and maybe gone and had a football league career, and um, yeah, we lost a couple of big players at around a similar time. I'm not sure if we lost Buzz that year as well. Uh, yeah, through, did his cruise shit in the yeah, so it ended up Tom Buzz, Dale, who were three key players. We lost them all, and I think we sort of fizzled out ever so slightly uh, back into that season. But no, again, we uh, punched above our weight and done really well. And Graham Heathcote was the manager throughout uh, this uh, period, but the following season we started badly and Graham uh, left the club. Ken McKenna, who had joined as assistant manager, took over as manager. And it was a really strange season. We took one, one point out of the first 30. Um, and in fact, you scored a goal against Barrow, which was the first goal again under Ken McKenna's uh, management ship, managership um, in a 2 0 victory here. And we went ever so close to, to staying up, but the, the, the abiding memory of that season is going to be that, that dreadful day against Eastbourne. Yeah, so obviously I played a lot of positions for Graham, you know, you know, being versatile. I'd play centre mid, right wing, right wing back, right back. Got moved around a fair bit. Um, when Ken got the job, he said, look, I'm going to play a little bit higher up in midfield. Um, and yeah, first game, Barrow I scored, I think. I think I had a 1v1 and uh, they scored from a rebound as well to make it 2 and it was a midweek game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Graham gave me a, it can give me a bit more of an attacking licence to begin with. Um, obviously, got moved about still, uh, filling in where I needed to. But yeah, that last day of the season, I mean, I, I remember I was poor. Uh, I think I started centre mid, ended up, might have ended up playing left back actually. A few changes he made. Um, we done great to get back into the game. B's got the hat-trick. Um, and yeah, just a disappointing way to lose it uh, with the way we conceded that last goal. And yeah, it just wasn't to be. Probably just give ourselves a little bit too much to do. And in that period, in your first two or three years at, uh, at Altrincham, uh, you won a number of England C caps, which must have been uh, a great experience uh, for you. And also, um, you, there was a possible move to Luton Town. Yeah, so I'd obviously heard about England C through my dad, and he'd, he'd I'd, uh, yeah, I say he'd mentioned it quite a lot growing up that he played and where he played and stuff. Um, so yeah, my first game was against Malta, um, which I scored in. We done well. I so Sean Newton played in that as well, who I knew, which was good. So someone I knew in the squad, um, and then I ended up playing in that same season. Got to the final of whatever the trophy was. That I forget what it's called now. Uh, against Belgium. Um, I think we lost we lost one 0 in the final, but I got man of the match. Had a had a good game, um, and then yeah, there was a bit of interest from from the back of that. Luton were one, um, a couple of others who called, um, but yeah, but without it getting to, we didn't get to the point where you know, right, you've got to make a decision, yes or no. Um, but as I say, there was interest, but sort of weighed it up with me mum and dad at the time. I decided then I was going to go to university and get me degree and you know it was only moving to a, a team in the same league ultimately so as I say I didn't think it was it was worth it uh, from from that point of view um, so yeah that was it really and, and Graham Rowley the chairman at the time he, he went out to a couple of the England away games uh, to support you and I think it's probably fair to say that you've had good support great support from the from the Rowley family down through the years 
Yeah, so Graham used to come with uh, John John Skello on the kit man. I think Foz might have come on a couple. Uh, I know they definitely came to Scotland and Ireland. They came to Estonia when I played in Tallinn. They came there. But yeah, just Graham himself and his family. Yeah, they they've I've, I've spoke about it before. What they did, what they've done for me. They've you know always looked after me. And, um, been fantastic servants for the club. Still are now. Um, yeah, couldn't I say couldn't thank them enough for what they've done for me and uh, how they how they looked after me, especially in them first years. So relegated, Ken McKenna went off to Morecambe with Jim Bentley and Lee Sinnott came in, and it was a good time under Lee Sinnott. Five seasons, uh, first season we finished eighth, second season playoffs got knocked out by Brackley, and then the memorable third season when we won the playoffs against uh, Geisley, and we played some great football. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, that that was a I've said again, I've said before that we had a group of players all similar age at that point. Um you know, a little sprinkling of experience as well, which you'd always need and um you know Robbie Lawton who'd been brilliant for me personally as a person and for the club I think everyone would agree he was brilliant. Uh he ended up leaving and once Robbie left, uh, you know, uh, Lee decided to give me the captain, see which Probably the best thing I could have got at the time. I was sort of at that age where you get to where you're not a, you're not a kid no more. It was 23, 24. Um, you know, I used to be still am a little bit of a moaner, but uh, I used to be a really, really bad moaner. I was quite volatile on the pitch in terms of my mouth and stuff, and it uh, it set me down a little bit. Apart from one game, I got caught foul of it at Solihull. Uh, background for me, Solly. Really <laughs> it's not going well for me. We can see the two in the last two minutes of stoppage time. I scored in the you game. You scored the goal. Yeah, the yeah. And then, a the funny story actually, I thought I got sent off. I uh, swore at the ref, uh, the linesman, I think actually. Um, I thought, oh, I'm getting it here when I get in. And he, um, we got in, I thought, I'm, I'm going to get it. And he just turned to Duncan. Just as I said to him, he said, "What you you need to decide what you want to do with your career when you get older." And we were all looking at him thinking, "What's he, what's he going to say here?" And he went, "What time did you get in on Thursday night?" And Duncan went, uh, "Oh, about, about half one in the morning." And he uh, he went, "No, you never, because you phoned me at half three, and I tell you what, son, you weren't in bed." And Duncan had phoned him in his pocket, pocket down, on a night yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he saved me a uh, saved me a roast in there that day. But yeah. Just in general, in, in 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 Lee's time, as I say, making me captain, we played we played some good stuff. You know, I think we were entertaining games most weeks. Like there was yeah. always goal. We, you know, we conceded a few as well, but uh, yeah. we'd always score a lot of goals. Uh, but no, it was a really enjoyable few years for me. There. I'm glad you mentioned that story about Duncan Watmore because uh, we, we tried to get that story out of Duncan on his leaving interview <laughs> before, when he went to Sunderland, but he wouldn't let us do it. So no. you've outed him there. That's uh, that, that's excellent. So we got promoted, and, and that day against Geisley was just just phenomenal. Yeah, it was, again, funnily enough, watching it, I think, did the air during COVID? Yeah, during I watched it back. Yeah. Probably wasn't as good as a game as I remember. Again, I didn't, I didn't have a very good game. I was, I was all right. Um, but yeah, packed house, I think, what was five? 4,632, yeah. I think it was. Considering it wasn't great weather either, because remember, rain sideways at one point. Um, and yeah, Hollywood end them, wasn't it? Bringing Will Cowell, you know, he was brought on solely for the pen, because he had sort of the pen technique, which is quite common now, to stutter and just roll it in the other corner. Um, Reeves had been awful at pens all the season, so that's why we dragged him off. Uh, and yeah, as I say, Hollywood ending and with a group of lads who we were really, really pally, so it, it was perfect. And there's an, another player, Greg Wilkinson, who hopefully will be uh, here Sunday. Yeah, he's got a little niggle actually, but oh. he, I said he couldn't move anyway <laughs> five, eight years ago, so it doesn't make a difference now. Uh, but no, he's probably as excited as anyone else actually to be playing in it, uh, so he'll be playing. So into the into the National League and a good season, um, finishing uh, 15th, and it, it was an excellent season, but the following season it all sort of turned sour a little bit and probably season we shouldn't have got relegated, but we did. Yeah, I think, I still think about it. What happened was we would, we'd done pretty well up till maybe March, Feb, the first season back in the conference and 
a few lads got injured. I, I think I missed the back two or three months. A couple of others, uh, I think a couple of others got little niggles and missed missed a few weeks, few months. And he played a few lads who probably hadn't been playing much throughout the season, and the result sort of tailed off. And I think the gaffer Lee at the time thought I need a bit of a change up, a little bit of a not a full clear out, but there was maybe five or six when I think Willow went, Cav, Cav ended up going. Forget off the top of my head, but there was a few more maybe who went. Um, and yeah, brought a few new signings in. He probably didn't quite hit the ground running as well he, as well as we would have hoped. And then yeah, it's sort of you could see in him. I, I could see in him a little bit as you could just tell the fight had gone out of him ever so slightly. Which and I think he held his hands up. He was pretty honest about that and said that himself. So I've got nothing but respect for him for as I say for what he did for me with the captaincy and giving me confidence to go and play and. I thought he'd done, he'd done great for the club, to be fair. So he goes back it's up to the level. Um, yeah, as I say, I think it's just sort of just fizzled out a little bit. And we got relegated that season. Neil Tonson was in charge at the end of the season. And then that led into the following season, which was just a, a disaster from start to finish, really. Yeah, it was bad. It was it was bad. Um, it shouldn't have happened. The back-to-back relegations... <laughs> Long and short. I mean, should, the, stat, the stats, yeah, one home win all season, yeah. four wins in total. You just can't get your head no, around those. You can line up a load of excuses, and you know, there was reasons why it wasn't, it shouldn't have happened, but that is ultimately it should not have happened, no matter what went on. Uh, personnel we had still should have been capable, as I say, once the rot sets in, it's difficult to, to shake the mentality off, and that's what it was. It was just, a, I think, a mindset thing more than anything else. and Again, I I didn't play much part in them two seasons. That was the time when I'd needed the up and stuff and struggled with the rehab and everything. Um, so I was a little bit detached from it, and yeah, you could sort of just tell that there's just, there's just no no confidence whatsoever. Um, you know, probably playing games expecting to lose, um, and yeah, it was just it was terrible. <laughs> so we had. We started with Neil Young and then Jim Harvey and then Matt Doughty with Robbie Lawton. It was an awful season all round and, 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 and Phil Parkinson and Neil Sorville then came in. But during that season, you did have a short spell as managing the team with Jake Maltz and uh, Alan Goodall and, and you did OK. Yeah, so I so uh, Neil Young left, I think it was a bank holiday weekend, so we'd played the Friday or the Saturday. Kers National on the Saturday, yeah. yeah. And he left on the Sunday and we had the game on the Monday, which was Kidderminster, was it? Kidderminster away, yeah. Uh, and look, we'd been poor up to that point. Like We were shipping a lot of goals. I think we lost 1-0 maybe at Kiddy. And it played well. Tight. Yeah. I, uh, we made Simon Richmond do the Dirk, uh, Dirk out roll, we called it for him. Played right wing and was just literally just a workhorse up there. Uh, but no, we were gutted because we had done well. And as I say, the lads deserved it at the, you know, for the start he had and the efforts he put in and stuff. But then I actually had to go to St George's for four days for rehab that week. So I wasn't actually there for the training in the week. So I was just back and forth with Malty. Um, you know, Alan, Neil Young had made Alan Goodall captain, club captain at the time. So he sort of wanted an input into things and he had ambitions of maybe going on to coach. So I thought it was a good opportunity for him. Um, but those two were still those two were still involved, able to play. I wasn't able to play because I was still rehabbing with my knee. But yeah, it was it was it was good. I enjoyed it, but it was tiring, like really, really, really tiring. Uh, surprised how much I was tired after the games because you're not playing. Uh, but no, I enjoyed it. It was it was uh, an experience anyway. And you probably would have carried on as captain if you hadn't been injured. But obviously Neil Young had to make a decision, and you lost the captaincy at, at that point. But going after after the disaster of the season. Enter the man Parkinson and his his oppo Neil Neil Sorville, May two thousand seventeen, and what we've what we've experienced in the, in the last uh, five seasons has just been phenomenal. Yeah, so as I say, <laughs> Pointman couldn't have worked out any better to where we are now, five years down the line. Um, you know, he, he said before. I think I've spoke about it before when I've done an interview another time. Can't remember when it was. No, it wasn't. It, it didn't make it easy for me. To begin with, the gaffer, um, I'd sort of had an agreement that I wasn't going to rush back playing the back end of his the, the previous season. 
just because it was a dead season and I was still wasn't hundred percent with me knee. So I said, look, I'm not going to rush back as long as I know I can, you know, I've got like whatever a few months uh, to prove myself when when the season starts. But rightly so, he said that's not my agreement and whatnot, and I had to prove myself to him, which ultimately I did. But yeah, again, similar to how Lee wanted us to play, probably with a little bit no disrespect to Lee, we had a little bit more direction in how we're actually going to play. We sort of had a bit of a free license under Lee to. Uh, you know, just go go out and express yourself. Really, weigh up how you think the game's going. But you know, between the gaffer and and, and Sorbs, you know, we've got a strategy and a philosophy how how they want us to play. And yeah, again, getting back to winning games and high scoring games and playing good football was after the after the difficult probably three years I had personally. Um, it was it was so refreshing and it was uh, yeah, like a yeah breath of fresh air and what the club needed at the time, no doubt. And whilst a lot of people would have thought, well, Northern Premier League is it's the lowest level of football that you've you've played in 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 your career, it was a really enjoyable season. I think everyone needed it. We hadn't won many games for probably two best part of two and a half years. We hadn't won many at all. Yeah. I wouldn't think. Um, so yeah, as you say, some some weird and wonderful grounds we played at. Uh, some places I never ever want to go back to. <laughs> um, but at the same time, yeah, some. Some some great games and put a put a uh, squad together with some great characters in as well. So, champions of the Northern Premier League playoffs was a great achievement in the first season back in National League North. We lost on penalties to Chorley after that epic night here against uh, Blythe Spartans in the semi at the semi final stage against Chorley, and then of course the the promotion year, COVID and everything. It was you, know, you couldn't make it up really. No, so the year. Uh, the the Blythe game is brilliant. As I said, I think we had a, did we have a good push up, push after Christmas. Yeah. We, that, we were down there. At one. Yeah, we, we did. Games from, in hand, from, didn't we? from from January, we yeah. really got pushing on. Um, so we were in good, real good run of form. You know, beat Blythe here on pens. Took a good Chorley side, which I think we probably not. Well, I will blame Manx because I had an argument with them last week in saying, and so he's in my bad books at the minute. I think we probably probably would have beat Chorley if he hadn't got sent off. He's still saying it wasn't a red. It was a red. It was two feet. He might have got the ball, but it was two feet. Um, so yeah, I think you know we were on a good we were on a good run of form there, and I think I say we would have got. I don't know who the final ended up being between Chorley and Spennymore. Spennymore was and it? Chorley won on on, yeah. on penalties. Um, but yeah, I think back to back probably would have been too quick anyway. Potentially, I don't know, may not have been, but you know having a year in that league and then saying like we, we know we're good enough now um, to get promoted from this league. And then yeah, with the the COVID year again, we were flying. I think up until the season up until the season got yeah. I mean, we, we were struggling. I think we were 18th in in November, but then we had a really good run. We had the the cup run, which culminated at Portsmouth, and just before COVID kicked in, we we were really were flying. We were we were the form team, and we looked like we were going to kick on. Yeah. So again, um, probably well, definitely came at the wrong time for us. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to be involved in the. In the playoff games, uh, a couple of things uh, went on our own personal for us, and we had we had our, our little boy as well, so I wasn't able to uh, to take part. So again, I was a little bit detached from it, but uh, yeah, incredible achievements, and especially after having nothing to do for however many months, it was a it was a nice relief for the lads to get back in and give everyone a bit of a uh, pick me up. Yeah. And you mentioned your little boy Henry; yeah. he'll be here on the Sunday. He will. And your He's, wife, Sean. Yeah, so I'm a bit worried about Henry because he's due a nap usually around midday. So I'm planning on bringing him on the pitch before the game, but he's going to be a crank. I know he is. Um, I've had to cut Shans on a hen do, which I've had to cut short for her. Uh, so she always moans that she's a, a footy widow. So even on one weekend that she's got away from me, I've, she's had to cut it short by a night. So yeah, sure, you're in the bad books there. Oh, yeah, no yeah. change there. Yeah. So fantastic promotion. And two seasons in the last National League, um, good season, good strong season in the end last year, 17th. It looks like we could do better than that, possibly even better the 14th position, which is our best finish in recent times in the, uh, in, in the National League. Uh, and things are going well at the club. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, last season was great in the sense we had a, essentially a free look at the league. 
to see where you need to be, what we need to do better, uh, what we need to do to compete with some of the bigger hitters, um, you know, where we needed to improve from a personnel point of view. And then this season, obviously a great start, um, at that rocky patch for that period of a few months. And then we've kicked back on again the last few months. Um, obviously, I've, my role's changed ever so slightly, which always it's going to happen with with age, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been it's been brilliant, and you know, as you say, we've got them targets. The gaffer's big on having his targets for us to hit. So the main one being, if we better last season's points tally, and you know, if we do that, hopefully that should take us to a, a lofty league position. That will, as you say, better our. 14th is the best 14th, yeah, yeah, in, so, in recent times yeah so fingers crossed you know we can poss possibly this hopefully this break hasn't come at a bad time for us in the sense we were on a good run of form but e even without the break we always knew the next run of fixtures were going to be difficult so mm -hmm. uh, you know recharged anyway at least and ready to give a, a good goal and can you can you pick out a, a high point in in your 14 uh, seasons and, and a low point yeah so Few high points, obviously Geisley being one. Um, the Blythe game was 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 one of the one of the, one of the best games I remember. Um, Portsmouth away in the FA Cup, despite the result, um, was it was a brilliant achievement. Obviously, goes without saying the lows of the relegations and not lows, but a regret is I know we've had the odd good the Portsmouth game and uh, Barnsley here, yeah, which I didn't play in. Probably my only regret is we've never had a proper ulti cup run where you know a giant like a proper giant killing or even the FA Trophy we should have all we've we've underperformed in my time here and in the trophy I think by one year we did okay ended up losing to Bath away I yeah think. in the last sixteen yeah yeah that was a decent chance uh, I was talking to my dad about that Saturday actually I had a good chance in that game. I, were we winning and or drawing? No, it was, we lost one nil, but we, yeah, we played I I, quite well. I had a good chance at nil nil. Uh, got cut back and played centre mid and just, just fizzed it wide and my dad went they'd gone down to Bath for the weekend him and my mum but yeah that's probably the uh, the lows the relegations and you know the two or three year period injured uh, when I needed the up on my knee um, and yeah that's probably the only other regret not having a, a proper solid cup run I'm fantastic that you've been awarded a testimonial it's very very rare for Altrincham football club players to uh, to be awarded a testimony and that's really testament to the longevity of your career here and your loyalty to the football club yeah so really proud to get it obviously I think it got announced during Covid did, I think yeah. uh, at the end, we did the end of season awards where we were all at home on Skype um, or Zoom whatever it was um, when Graham announced it and obviously it's been a couple of years since obviously with everything that's gone on but no I'm obviously really proud to get it you know and wind Stewie up you know me, me having getting one and Stewie not feels a bit weird to me that's just my character uh, but no as I say it's un, as you say it doesn't really happen now people stay in a, a club for so long and you know I've done 14 years Simon had done 11 I think before me and Jake's getting around that time of time now himself so yeah it's, as I say uh, it's pretty rare and I'd, I'd be surprised if you see it happening much moving forward so yeah I say delighted and hope it's a good day for everybody and you've got some great ulti legends coming down on Sunday yeah I should uh, don't know how to state some of them are in but um, yeah hopefully it's a good game I was with it it was a difficult one we had to do a Sunday because a lot of the lads who were playing in the game are still playing on a Saturday um, so I don't know how much I'm going to get out of you know the likes of uh, Simon Richmond Luca Scott Leather Willow they'll all be playing Saturday Nicky Clay but then yeah I've got you know Reevesy big fans favourite uh, Youngie and Christina as I say they were they were big fan favourites when I was here Robbie unfortunately can't play so he's going to help take the team with, with, with Graham um, so I'll have to warn Sov and the gaffer about some of the uh, antics he might try on uh, <laughs> but yeah should be a good day as I say I'm looking forward to seeing them guys as well you know I see a few of them still quite often but no not, not many of them, so uh, yeah, it should be a great day. Right, well, thanks very much uh, for, for joining us for this interview. It's been really, really fascinating uh, talking to you. And get yourself down to the Jay Davidson Stadium 
on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. kickoff. It's going to be a really, really great occasion. Lots and lots of faces that you haven't seen for a, a while and, and legends of Altrincham Football Club. And, of course, the man himself, Sean Densmore. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Cheers, Blake.